Hi, my name is Peter, and I will be describing Big O. What is Big O? Well, simply Big O is nothing but a mathematical way of describing an efficiency of an algorithm. In certain projects, you need to know how programs runtimes scales as input gets bigger. I'll just get right into the code and right into the details. So here's a simple method that basically finds the number of times a value is in an array. We uh, iterate x for every time we find this value. Let's define one step as one comparison in this array, where it compares a value in this array to the value we're searching for. This is going to be our first and final step. We're going to measure runtime based on the number of steps we take. So every time this line of code is called, we're going to count it as one step. At the end of this code, how many steps will this code take? Well, of course, it's first based off on our array size. So we're going to write it as a function based on our array size. Our function n is going to take the size of the array, and it's going to return the number of steps it took. So how many steps is it going to be? Well, of course, we know it's going to be directly proportional. For every value in an array, we're going to take another step. So this is going to be a directly linear relationship and we're going to call this order of n or this is going to be the complexity with the order of n, a linear value. Here's the thing about O of n. Our runtime of the function and our order of the function, they are two different things. Our order of our function shows the n behavior of the function. It shows how it grows as the value goes large. Our order of n only really cares about what happens as this value gets really, really big. So, as an example, here's our um, order of n as it graphed out. Of course, it's going to be a straight line. It's going to be f of n is equal to n. Let's say we modify our code. Add one more extra comparison. We're going to see the first value of the array is going to be equal to 1. So whenever lines 9 or 12 get caught, we're going to count that as one step in our program. How many steps will this program take? Well, of course, it, again, it depends on our array size, and it's going to be almost similar to the other one. Our runtime is going to be f of n plus 1, correct? Because we added another step in our array. Our order of their function is not O of n plus 1. It's going to be order of n. It is still growing at a linear rate. Big O is only concerned about the n behavior of the function. They both grow at the same rate, as you can see here. All we really care about is how fast it grows. O of n of this function is still n. Now let's say we have another function. This one is going to basically be a kind of an array multiplier. It's going to take the first value of the array and it's going to multiply it all by the all the rest of the values of the array and add it to sum. Then it's going to take the second value of the array and multiply it by all the other values in the array again and add it to the sum. So, how long is this program going to take? You can pause the video and try to figure it out, or if you don't need to, I'm going to continue ahead. Same thing, we're going to try to base it off the array size and see how many steps it takes. So whenever line 26 gets called, we're going to iterate it. The order of this function would be O of n squared. The outside uh, loop runs n times, and for every one time loop, it runs another nth time. So it's going to run a total of n squared times. The end behavior of this function is equal to our n squared behavior, so the runtime and the order are the same. However, again, they are not the same thing. Let's modify it so we can demonstrate the difference. We're going to have the same exact array here, except we're going to do one more loop through it. We're going to, after we're done looping through it, we're going to loop through it one more time, and we're going to add all the values of the array again to it. So what's going to be the runtime and the order of this function? The order of the function is still n squared, but our runtime of the function is n squared plus n. Why? Well, the difference between the two is our runtime now takes another n steps because we loop through the array one more in additional time, but the order is still n squared. Why? The n behavior of these two functions are identical. They're still growing at the same rate, even though this one's a little bit steeper towards the beginning. The n behavior compared to the two functions uh, as we can see for larger and larger values of n, they're becoming increasingly, increasingly closer together. Uh, for larger and larger values of n, we can see it becomes almost insignificant for extremely large values of it. This is only 10 and 20. Now imagine like 300 and 400. They're basically almost the same thing. The order of the function only really depends on what's taking it the most to grow. This n squared term is the one that's most important. So here's another simple example. What's going to be the order of this function? It does nothing but return 1. Of course, it's just a flat linear rate. It's only running one step, 
it's going to be not growing at all. It doesn't matter in the size of the array. Here's a recursive example. Now this one is somewhat complicated. This one um, may not come out to exactly to a nice flat nice function but you can see how it's going to grow if you plot it out enough times. Let's assume one step is whenever a function gets called or something is returned. Let's see what's going to happen as our number gets bigger and bigger or int n. It also doesn't have to be an array. It can be any input. Now this one is a little bit complicated. It might be a little bit hard to figure out if you took the time and if you basically plotted every single step and you know kept on drawing out the recursive tree and seeing how many times it returned one 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 you can see it's about to the end you may get some different numbers you may get it to be around 15 or 14 by like the fourth step and you may get it to be like 24 by like the fifth step or something like that I think that it actually comes out to be about like 1.6 to the n but it is still exponential it takes more and more steps as we plug in more and more values Let's try binary search. What would be the big O of a worst case of a sort of binary search? Uh, if you don't remember, binary search basically has a sorted list and it splits it in half, checks to see if the value is there, and then it checks to see if the value, uh, if the middle of the value is greater or less than the value you're searching for. And then it, if it's greater than, it goes to the second half of the array. If it's less than, it goes to the first half of the array. It keeps on splitting it in half until it finds the value. So what would be the worst case scenario? So you can try it with a sample array or you can just kind of think about it. The big O of this one is O of log n. Now since it always splits the stack in half and the worst case will split it until there's only a value, it will only split it until there's log base 2 of n. Even though it's log of n, log base 2 of n, it's still written as log of n as it's logarithmic. It's still growing in this logarithmic shape. All right. So, big O topics to consider. Now, big O is a sum of way of describing how algorithms grow as numbers get larger and larger. Here's all the different runtimes for different uh, algorithms you have. Our big topic to consider is to try to figure out if we can sort our algorithms and try to figure out how our algorithms grow as they get larger and larger. These are the most important ones, and you need to remember, your algorithm is only as fast as its least efficient one. So if you have n factorial in your um, algorithm by calculating it, and then you have another loop through something or like that, and it's still O of n, it's still going to grow O of n factorial. Our different orders will show the runtime of different algorithms, right? Our order only matters based on how slow it's actually going to be. Uh, in the next video, I'll describe the math behind these functions. My name is Peter, and I hope that was useful, and I'll see you in the next video.